Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to install the front wheel knuckle on a Honda S2000. The first thing you want to do is reinstall the ball joints and tie rod. Set the wheel knuckle on the lower ball joint and use a 17mm socket to install the two bolts securing the knuckle to the lower ball joint. Ideally you'll want to torque these bolts to 47 foot pounds, but you may not be able to get leverage until you connect the tie rod so don't worry about that for now. Next, insert the tie rod end into the wheel knuckle and use a 19mm socket to reinstall the nut, securing the tie rod end to the wheel knuckle. Torque the nut to 40 foot pounds and install a new cotter pin on the tie rod end. Also, now that the wheel knuckle is more firmly held in place, torque the two lower ball joint bolts to 47 foot pounds. The upper ball joint is the most challenging of these to reinstall. If the front control arm bushings are clocked correctly, the upper ball joint will not reach the wheel knuckle without a lot of force. In order to bring the ball joint and wheel knuckle closer together, what I do is insert a jack underneath the front lower control arm and jack it up until the upper ball joint and the wheel knuckle meet. Once the upper ball joint is in the wheel knuckle, very carefully thread the castle nut onto the ball joint. If you're lucky, you should be able to torque down the castle nut, but in some cases what will happen is the ball joint will just end up spinning when you tighten the castle nut. In this case, you may need to apply some additional pressure to the ball joint. In order to do this, I insert some wooden 2x4s and blocks in between the top of the control arm and the frame of the car. I'll continue to jack up the front control arm until the ball joint is pressed firmly into the wheel knuckle and under a lot of pressure. This should give you a chance to use a 17mm socket to tighten the castle nut. The torque spec for the castle nut is between 36 to 43 foot pounds for AP1s and 41 to 48 foot pounds for AP2s. The reason the torque spec is a range as opposed to a specific number is because the holes on the castle nut will need to align with the holes on the ball joint stud in order for you to insert a cotter pin between the two. So start torquing the castle nut at the lowest number in the range and keep tightening it until you can fit a cotter pin through it. Now you'll want to reinstall the wheel speed or ABS sensor. Use a 10mm socket to reinstall the two bolts securing the wheel speed sensor to the wheel knuckle. The longer bolt goes into the sensor and the shorter bolt with the washers goes into the wiring harness tab. Torque them to 7.2 foot-pounds. Insert the brake rotor onto the wheel hub. Then optionally install the two screws that secure the brake rotor to the wheel hub. Line up the brake caliper bracket alongside the wheel knuckle and use a 17mm socket to reinstall the two bolts securing the brake caliper bracket to the wheel knuckle. Torque the bolts to 79.6 foot-pounds for AP1s and 83.2 foot-pounds for AP2s. I usually just do 80 pounds, honestly. Insert the brake pads onto the caliper bracket and slide the caliper into place. Reinstall the two caliper guide pin bolts holding the caliper in place with a 12mm wrench or socket and a 19mm open end wrench. Place the 19mm wrench onto the slide pin and hold it in place while using the 12mm wrench to tighten the bolts. Torque them to 24 foot-pounds. Use a 12mm socket to install the bolt securing the brake line to the wheel knuckle. Torque it to 16 foot-pounds. And that is pretty much it. Reinstall the wheels and lower the car back down to the ground. If you enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button and leave a comment down below for any DIY you'd like to see in the future.